Do you use the CPS MT69 or other tool to reduce pressure? Yes, those are absolutely good and valid tools to have now, specifically the CPS version. Um, I don't care for their design specifically. The reason for that is it's too compact and small for large volumes that we transfer. So what this is, it's a subcooler. They, like, they've got a fancy scientific technical name or something for it, but we refer to these as subcoolers in the industry. I've made my own. I've got a few different versions of it I've made. Uh, so I came up with a design for a brace plate one. Now, I'm not the first person in the world to ever come up with that. Um, and I've had a few people take that design and, and iterate it for themselves as well. Having a subcooler is extremely important, especially if you're doing an outdoor, outside recovery of any kind on a high pressure refrigerant. Uh, you, you really want some way to be able to de-superheat that refrigerant. And we, we call it subcoolers or subcooling because we technically do get it to, or at least the good ones will get it back into a liquid state lots of the time. Really, the, the main objective is to de-superheat the, the heat of compression that is added with the, through the recovery machine and then compressing more and more refrigerant into uh, the, the recovery cylinder that we're using. Like that is our ultimate issue. Uh, recovery cylinder between not only just cramming more refrigerant into that same space, but then the heat of compression we get from the recovery pump. Those two things cause a lot of pressure and heat to build up in our cylinder. That slows down, if not brings our recovery to a complete stop in some cases. So... People over time have used water hoses on the tanks. I mean, I've done that plenty of times. There's there's several methods we've tried to use. So a subcooler uh, is an extremely effective way of being able to de-superheat that refrigerant um, so that we don't allow that heat to stack on our cylinder and we keep our, our tank pressure down, which means we move more refrigerant faster. My issue with CPS's design, moving large volumes in a chiller application, it's too tightly wound. When we make our own, typically what you'll do is you'll take a, a nitrogen, a little 30 cubic inch or cubic foot nitrogen tank, something like that, and you'll use that and you can wind, wind you know, 15, 20 feet worth of 3 8 copper around it and give you two stub outs, stick that in a five gallon bucket, You've got a subcooler. That was my very first one I came up with. The benefit to a setup like that is the copper coils get spread out a lot further. It's not as compact and it's not in this nice, neat, pretty package. And if all you're doing is smaller equipment, that little CPS one is great for that. My issues I've had is it, it struggles to keep up with high volumes over an extended period of time, which is what we're doing when we're doing our chiller recovery. Like we're moving hundreds of pounds and this would be in an air cooled application specifically. Even if you're trying to use this on a larger water cooled, it's just not, it's not big enough. It's not adequate for that type of application. So that's where our, in my opinion, creating your own out of just a copper coil, is probably better get better operation out of it then you just have to deal with you know do you uh, use ice do you have an ability to just constantly have water cycling through your bucket you know how are you going to cool it and that's where i liked the um the brace plate version i came up with where we can flow water through the brace plate the water flowing through there on one circuit refrigerant on the other circuit works extremely well and then I'll take and connect a, um, I've got a nylon tube with a barb fitting I'll stick onto it and I can run that to a, a drain somewhere, whether it be a roof drain, a floor drain, I can get that into a drain. It doesn't take a ton of water, just a, a pretty steady trickle, um, but it's enough that it'll, it, it can remove that, that heat out of it that we need for the D superheating. So do I use the CPS tool? No. Have I? Yes, plenty. Um, I've had some companies that provided that as a company provided tool, I guess. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've, I've committed, I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow 
and help this industry take step f- steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's where I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can, uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 